So for the past few years, AI and ChatGPT have been the hot topic within the design and development community. And the biggest question on everyone's mind is always, is AI going to take over our jobs? If you asked me that question before 2024, I would have said no, but this new device is definitely going to change the way I think about AI moving forward. So this is the Rabbit R1 and they launched a introduction video about a month ago on their YouTube channel. It's actually been on the horizon for a while, but it just never got a release date. And now it's on pre-order, which you can get from their website. So the main difference between the Rabbit R1 and other AI platforms at the moment is that first of all, it's a physical product, whereas things like ChatGPT and Midjourney, they are both just an application on your existing devices. So either on a browser or an app for ChatGPT or Midjourney via Discord. And the difference between them is the AI model in which they are based on. So you see most AI tools right now, they excel at tasks like language processing or pixel generation. ChatGPT is on a large language model. And if you were to ask ChatGPT a question, it would be able to search the whole internet and find the solution for you. And again, if you ask Midjourney to create something, it will search the internet and produce an image based on your prompt. But the Rabbit R1 is something else entirely. So Rabbit R1 operates on a large action model, which means it's all about understanding human intention and action. So how does that differ from ChatGPT and Midjourney? So what the Rabbit R1 does is it will figure out the interface and carry out tasks based on human intention. So we use the example the Rabbit R1 presented in their keynote. You can ask ChatGPT to book you a flight. It can go online and figure out how to book a flight ticket, but it can't actually carry out the action. And beyond ChatGPT, you've got things like Siri and Alexa, which on a basis seems like it's doing a similar function, but they're actually all pre-coded into the agent. So you can ask Siri to turn on the alarm or play Spotify, but these are actually hard-coded into Siri to carry out these functions for you. What the Rabbit R1 does is actually figures out the journey in which it needs to go through to carry out a specific task. And unlike the agents like Siri and Alexa, it's not pre-coded. So it's figuring things out there and then. And on top of that, the Rabbit R1's also got a camera where it can figure things out just from looking at it. So obviously the Rabbit R1 keynote has made it look very impressive. But this is where I think there might be some overselling uh, of the device. So at one point of the video, it actually shows that you need to log on to one of these platforms uh, via the web browser. So you can see the CEO uh, logging in to Spotify via his laptop. And obviously no one's had their hands on the product yet, but personally, I feel like this is slightly misleading because it's requiring you to log in to a server. To me, it seems like there's obviously something in the back end that they've done to operate Spotify specifically. And what I think would be really interesting is, would it actually be able to operate apps where there is no platform for them to log in? So for example, Photoshop, you know, Photoshop's got loads of different features. How will it actually figure out what function to use and whether or not this is something that the large action model will eventually be able to figure out? The second thing I'm interested in is how the camera is actually gonna be integrated properly. So the device itself is only gonna cost $200. That is very, very cheap. Is it gonna be able to create something that's got good enough hardware for it to be able to properly make use of a large action model? So in one of the clips, you can see that the CEO was taking a picture of the fridge and asking it to come up with a dish, but the camera quality seems to be really, really bad. And the fridge that is shown it's obviously not real, like no fridge is that well lit. It's literally like a full on LED panel in the background shining on every single object. And everything is also separated really well. So in reality, what we'll have is likely packaging of, uh, you know, meat and different vegetables. So how is it actually gonna be able to figure all these out as the CEO demonstrated here? And the third thing is build quality. It's a $200 device with no subscription, and they're saying they're not gonna be collecting or selling your data. So how are they actually making money from all of this? Surely the large language model that they are building from this device is gonna be sold onto third parties at some point. Uh, from a financial perspective, it just doesn't really add up. So despite all these things that I mentioned, I do think the Rabbit R1 is taking the right direction in terms of the next step for AI. But personally, I don't think it will take the creativity side away just yet. I think AI will certainly make tasks easier, 
But I do truly think that it would be very, very difficult for AI to get to a point where it can just completely replace a designer in terms of creating completely unique designs. Because at the end of the day, AI is still dependent on the input that is being received. And same goes to development as well. So uh, it would definitely be able to help you improve efficiency and call up codes or reference things that a human might not be able to remember. But I don't think you'll ever be able to replace human when it's trying to uh, construct something that's highly complex and innovation is required on building something new. However, that doesn't mean that as a designer or developer, you should ignore AI completely. So one of the main things that I'm learning at the moment is AI prompting. I think being able to understand how to interact with AI is really important and to help you streamline your process is really good. So for example, in ChatGPT, uh, knowing what questions to ask it in order to give you the right answer when you want to produce a certain line of code, for example, that's really important. And for Midjourney, it's actually quite complicated uh, to figure out all the different prompts that they've got uh, to create something uh, very unique or specific. So for example, you can ask Midjourney to picture what Pikachu would look like if he was a Marvel character because it's very good at identifying things that exist and creating something in between. But if you were to start asking it to create something that is completely original with a lot of specific requirements, then that's where Midjourney is starting to fail a little bit. So overall, I think I'll definitely get my hands on the Rabbit R1 when it comes out, but I don't think it's going to be taking UI, UX or development jobs anytime soon.